let's see. I am looking for my medical dictionary. Inflammation, here we go. Aha, here we go. The definition of inflammation, derived from the Latin inflammare, meaning to set on fire. When you hear the term inflammation, what comes to mind? Joint pain after a long workout? Redness and swelling after a bee sting? These are examples of acute inflammation, or inflammation specific to one area of the body. Now we're learning much more about another kind of inflammation, chronic inflammation. And your level of chronic inflammation may be very telling about what the future holds for your health. Let's return to the example of the bee sting. In most cases, a person's white blood cells fight off foreign substances. In this case, the poison from the bee sting. White blood cells release powerful chemicals which can damage tissues, causing the redness and swelling that you see after the bee sting. So let's look at this on a larger scale. Say you're someone who eats a lot of processed and refined foods. These foods contain substances that your body doesn't know what to do with. Just as your immune system reacts to the poison from the bee sting, it also reacts to the substances from these foods. Over time, this leads to a general state of inflammation in your whole body. This is when the light bulb goes off when we discuss this with our patients. It's basic. When you don't treat your body well, your immune system attacks. But it's a silent war, one that takes place over time. You don't feel the effects right away. Day after day, white blood cells release a host of chemicals which can damage all of the tissues in your body. Your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, increasing your risk of having a heart attack, a stroke, or even developing diabetes. We are just beginning to understand the relationship between chronic inflammation and cancer and neurologic disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. Needless to say, the effects of chronic inflammation can be devastating. Sounds scary? It's a wake-up call for sure, but it's also very exciting because we are identifying new ways of treating, detecting, and preventing chronic inflammation. Now we understand. If you eat unhealthy food, your immune system is stuck in a never-ending war. Tissue damage will go on and on and on. So how do you calm your immune system down? Well, the first step is to change what's on your plate. Number one, go for veggies, veggies, veggies. To the white blood cell, a nutrient from a healthy vegetable is an ally, a trusted friend. When you eat your veggies, you'll be inviting your body to a ceasefire and calling an end to the war going on inside. Number two, antioxidants. Blueberries, cherries, pomegranates. There are so many delicious foods that contain antioxidants. These are substances that reduce tissue damage. They can do a lot to protect your internal organs. And number three, fish. Certain types of oily fish, the types that contain omega-3 fatty acids, can do a lot to calm an overactive immune system. Fish oil supplements can also be helpful here. Ask your doctor how much you need and which forms are best for you. As a physician, I'm excited that we are learning so much about the relationship between chronic inflammation and the diseases that affect so many of my patients. My prescription for you? Treat your body well, every day, so that your immune system can take care of the simple things, like bee stings. <laughs>